Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jess Butler. I am the program director for Lincoln Street Map in the US, which you haven't heard me introduce myself six times already today. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk uh, very briefly, but try to rush through this. Um, one of the other programs that we are running, this one is near and dear to my heart, um, and that is Mapping for Impact. Um, so Open Street Map US started this program two years ago now. Um, where we are working um, and partnering with nonprofit, government, and other organizations here in the United States uh, to address civic, environmental, and social justice issues with OpenStreetMap. Um, if you've been hanging out in this room this morning, you've seen um, amazing use cases of how OpenStreetMap has addressed these causes, um, especially around the world. And this has been done in the US as well, um, particularly at local community group levels. Um, Map Time Be More, Code for Charlottesville, those are just some examples of local groups who have done this effort really well. Um, but we needed to be able to address this at a national and broader level. So we created Mapping for Impact to partner um, with these types of organizations. Um, and so actually a few years ago, um, Kaboom, a national nonprofit, reached out to us. So Kaboom, um, if you've seen Parks and Rec, you've seen them featured on that show. Um, but they were um, they are working to end place-based inequity across the US. A lot of um, under-resourced communities don't have access to playgrounds or sport courts, um, or if they do, it might be um, of inequitable quality. So they came to us and they asked what um we felt like a very simple question. They asked if we could map every playground in Philadelphia, um, because they needed to know this data for their work. Beauty of maps is when you know where things are, you know where they're not. And so they needed to know where these missing gaps were in Philadelphia neighborhoods to address these issues of equity. Um, and so we said, yeah, let's try it. Um, and so we did, we put up a cost on the tasking manager um, and made a call out to volunteers. And in just six weeks, we mapped, what was it? Yeah, over 3,000 um, play spaces across Philadelphia. And that data was used immediately by Kaboom to be able to identify where they were going to address those issues and put um, quality play spaces in these underserved communities. Um, and Kaboom was really excited about what we were able to do as a community. Um, and so they reached out again, um, but for Colorado. So they said, hey, we wanna do this again. We're partnering with Colorado Health Foundation on a project. Can you map playgrounds across three counties in um, in Colorado, mostly rural areas, because um, this data didn't exist anywhere. And in a handful of weeks, once again, almost 2,000 parks and play spaces, our community was able to map. Um, and that data is going into the Colorado um, Equity Atlas. Um, so that data is immediately being used um, for um, these entities to be able to address issues of health equity in the state of Colorado. Um, another partner that we have been working with is Rising Cloud Effect. So they are working um, on water safety and access to um, swimming pools and swim training in New York City. Um, so they came to us, they had a bigger ask. They said, can we map every swimming pool in the United States? Okay. <laughs> uh, that'll take a while. <laughs> Um, but we started, we wanted to focus on one area. They work largely in New York City. Um, and that is a place where she, nobody uh, knows how many swimming pools there are. Um, and we're not just talking about residential. We're talking about public, private um, as well. Um, and in their case, um, they needed to know um, where all these swimming pools exist, um, similar to the playground challenge, so that they can identify um, areas where the city needs to be working to address these access issues. Um, in particular, in New York City, um, communities of color and communities that are low income are at the highest risk of drowning. Um, and so this is a huge issue for the city. Um, if you're familiar with Rockaway Beach, that has numerous drownings there. Um, and rising kind of that works in those communities to address this. So this is data that they really need to advocate for their work. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is a bigger task. We're doing this one in two phases. One, mapping all of the, uh, the pools from remote imagery. Um, but then the second one, this is going to be the next phase in the future. It's actually getting people on the ground and getting that detailed data of sizes of pools um, and even capturing indoor data um, for the city. Um, we're almost there. We've been working on this task for a while. Um, I 
I did not realize how many swimming pools were in New York City, uh, way more than I thought. Um, we've already mapped over 40,000 swimming pools in the city. Um, so very quickly, this is going to be the most comprehensive data set um, to help with these challenges in New York City. Um, we're 97% complete. I would love if we could get to 100% by the end of this conference. I'm going to take one of the birds of a feather um, spaces later this afternoon. Um, and if you want to come map swimming pools with me, I would love that. Let's let's get this to 100% and say that we did it together this weekend. Um, but I do want to shout out, most of these swimming pools have been done by one mapper in Uganda, which is the beauty of our <laughs> But um, So what's next? Of course, um, continue to grow partners. We have a couple of partners in the works for new projects. Um, and swimming pools and playgrounds um, all feel like kind of one category, but we're expanding. We would love to expand that, um, especially issues of environmental concern. Um, so if you know partners in the United States that could benefit from the OpenStreetMap community, creating this data for them, please reach out. We'd love to bring on new partners. Um, Kaboom and Rising Tide Effect, we're going to continue those partnerships as long as they need data. Um, both those organizations have fallen in love with OpenStreetMap and the power of this community. Um, but then finally, the third one, and this is a real call to action to this community. Um, I want to make sure that we're, um, as an organization, enabling local mappers to be making these connections and these partnerships. Um, so if you have local small nonprofits in your hometowns that could use this data, it's not going to be me reaching out to everyone. So I would love to develop um, a more decentralized way where we can connect with these partners and we can, I can help with that as well. So um, if you have ideas on partners or how we can build out maybe community toolkits or decentralize these connections, please reach out. Um, I would love to connect with you um, and make a stronger impact with OpenStreetMap. So, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Question. Yes. Great. Uh, how the moves and folks and the school networks folks, how do they know? Great question. Okay, so um, Kaboom. Um, I honestly don't know. It was a whole email. Okay. Um, they, Kaboom is um, a very large organization. They benefit from having a GIS team. That is one challenge that I did address in the presentation, is a lot of nonprofits or organizations, they don't have a GIS person. They don't have someone to use that data. So that's another need we have, is having people who can help with that. Um, so Kaboom, I think they were already pulling that OSS data, recognized that that needed to be filled out better. Um, and so, but for rising side effects, it was a random conference connection, right? Someone saying, hey, would you guys not pull it? And that's how I got from there. So, great. Yeah. Other questions? Monica? Yeah. Um, so, I have a question Pocket, I mapped the city pool for the whole year last year. It's a no go pool. It's too big. Like, how how is it going to be? Um, that's a good question. I mean, and honestly, uh, New York City should have done a That was me being wildly naive and not really being helpful for there. We should have broke that up into boroughs and done different, you know, different boroughs or even yeah. smaller. Um, so it's not a trial and error, honestly. Um, and then also just years of creating tasks the task manager and knowing what keeps people motivated. Um, so with these organizations that have these larger ambitions, it's more of let's scale it down to a size that we can work on the task manager to keep people motivated. Um, so for the Colorado project with Kaboom, with Kaboom um, we broke this down to like for those and that's that kind of Another big back question on that. I'm wondering, if, you know, if you start thinking about scaling up the larger projects, I'm wondering if there's a way to sort of have like an augmentation. Like we thought about this. You know, you could use machine learning, for example, at satellite imagery that's publicly available to say, here are my kids people here, right. and then use in you know, the sort of like that's one way you can start your task. No, I mean, is that a strategy that you've considered? Is it like a resource limitation thing? Like, how, how do you envision scaling past even scale of the city in the future? 
Right. No, it's a great question. Um, I would love to do that. A lot of it's just been, um, it's a fledgling program. Um, so we're just kind of figuring out as we go. And also there's like three of us running this whole organization. Um, but um, yeah, so I mean, getting, working with those tools and if people have ideas on how we can be doing scaling, um, I know MapSwipe is doing amazing work with that. And I'd love to be partnering with MapSwipe. That would have been a great partnership for the swimming pools. I think we would have gotten through this a lot faster. Um, so, and especially like machine learning, um, it just takes um, someone in the community who has those skills and can bring that to the project. Um, and we'd be open to figuring out, yeah, how we can get that data on the map. Thank you.